Hey everybody, Mr. MathBlock here. This lesson is relating multiplication to division. So here we're going to use some grids, an array, and uh, we're going to use the, the reverse distributive property. So this is our eighth lesson in chapter one. Here's our common core strand. And then our question is, how is multiplication used to, to solve division problems? So we can use a, uh, the relationship between multiplication and division to solve division problems. Uh, if we use the same numbers, multiplication and division are opposite operations or inverse operations. For example, here's a multiplication sentence where we have the two factors 4 times 7 and it gives us the product 28. Well, the related um, division problem would be this. Uh, and it's the inverse operation. So this 28 is now called the dividend right here. Okay, and then so this is called the divisor because we're dividing the 4 into it, and then the quotient is 7 right here. Okay, if you have trouble remembering these, um, it, we'll say them enough that it should start getting a little familiar anyway. So anyways, uh, the divisor is what we're dividing into, the dividend, and then the quotient is always our answer. Okay, so um, uh, this is a, a related uh, division problem that relates to this multiplication sentence. Now we could have also said... Uh, 28 divided by 7 equals 4 right there. It just depends on which numbers you want to pick. This number divided by this one or this one and it equals the other number right there. Okay, So 28 would be the dividend and 7 would be the divisor and 4 would be the quotient on that guy. Okay, let's try some of this you guys. Alright, so Janet and five friends collect 26, 126 tickets for the upcoming fair. They share the tickets equally. How many tickets uh, will each person get? Okay, so what we're going to do in this lesson is we are going to uh, divide 126 divided by, okay, so that's the dividend right there. So the dividend is that 126. Okay, and we're going to divide that by, what's our dividers? It's not five. Be careful. It's Janet and her five friends. So that's going to give us six. We're going to divide that by six. Okay, so just be careful. So here's one way. We're going to make an array, you guys. So here's a, um, let me just slide that up there. Here's a grid right here. Okay, and what we're going to do is outline a rectangle, rectangular array on this grid to model 126 square, uh, squares. Okay, so we got to do some lots of counting here, and I'm cheating a little bit because I've already done it to save time. And we're going to make sure that they are arranged in six rows because it's going to be Janet and her five friends for the six people, okay, of the same length. So we got to do six rows. So here's six rows right there, okay. And then how far over am I going to go? I'm just going to keep adding six, 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 keep adding it until we get to 126 squares. So there it is right there, okay. So so now what they'd like us to do is shade each row a different color. Okay, so there's, I shaded this row sort of a goldy, yellowy, orangey or whatever. This row green, this is gray. This is kind of a purple blue. This is pink and this is yellow right here. Okay, if you're like my son, you are colorblind and this color right here would be hard to see. This color and this color might be hard to see also. So I really apologize if you're colorblind uh, like my son is because uh, he has a hard time seeing that. You'll still get the lesson though. So how many squares are shaded in each row? Okay, well, let's count them. We'll just go across this top one. They're all the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Okay, so there's twenty-one squares shaded in each row. All right, let's move that up. So. Uh, let's use the array to complete the multiplication sentence, okay? Then we'll use the multiplication sentence to complete the related division sentence, okay? Remember from uh, last year when we did these arrays, we would do uh, this times this would get us this area right here. So 6 times, 100, six times 21 would equal these 126 squares, okay? So then uh, we take uh, the 126 and we divide it by, by 6, and that's going to give us this 21 right here, okay? So there's our, um, uh, our related division problem right there, okay? So, so let's answer the question. Each of the six friends will end up getting... 21 tickets. Okay, so if a ticket counts for a ride, they get to do 21 rides. Okay, let's use the distributive property and divide. 56 divided by 4. Okay, this is kind of slick. 
All right, we can use the distributive property and an area model to solve division problems. Remember, the distributive property states that when we multiply something times the sum of two numbers, then we just distribute this something through. So this times this, this times this, and we add those two products together. Do you remember doing that right there? Okay, uh, so let's, let's write a related multiplication sentence for the division problem above, this division problem above, okay? And we want to do it so it's um, something that's compatible uh, with uh, 4 right here. So let's use the divisors as factors and the dividends as the product. The quotient will be the unknown factor. All right, so 56 divided by 4. Okay, so here's the divisor and the factor right here, 56 divided by 4. That gives us uh, 4 times something equals 56 right here. Okay, so here's the problem right here. All right, so let's, the related multiplication problem would be this times what would equal this 56 right there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, and uh, here's an array that shows this right here. So 4 times what equals 56. Okay, so here's a rectangle. 4 times something equals that 56 right there. All right, so let's just move that up right there. Well, let's use uh, the distributive property to break apart the larger area into smaller areas for partial products that we know. Okay, well, 56 also equals 40 plus 16. And 40 is a multiple of 4, and 16 is a multiple of 4. So by the distributive property, we can say 40 is 4 times what, and then uh, 16 is 4 times what. That will also equal 16 right there, okay? Or 56, I mean. So 4 times 10 gives us this 40. 4 times 4 gives us this 60 right here. So that means that these lengths up here are going to be 10 and 4 right there, okay? So find the sum of the unknown factors of the smaller areas, all right? So we're going to find the sum of these guys. 10 plus 4 equals 14. So this whole length is 14, so that means that means 4 times 14 is going to equal this 56 right there. Okay, so, so in other words, 56 divided by 4 is going to give us 14. All right, let's try that again, you guys. Let's, let's uh, explain how we can use the distributive property to find quotients of 96 divided by 8. All right, well, 96 divided by 8, we can break that 96 down by using uh, 80 plus 16. And we know 80 is a multiple of 8. That's 8 times 10. We know 16 is a multiple of 8. That's 8 times 2. So if we add 10 plus 2, that's going to give us 12. So then 8 times 12, because this is 8 times 10 and 8 times 2, so 8 times 10 plus 2 is 12. 8 times 12 is also 96. So we can find the quotient then that 96 divided by 8 is that 96 divided by this 8 is that 12. Okay, did you see that, you guys? We, we broke this down into uh, numbers that are easier to divide by 8. Okay, so then we got 10 plus 2. So that gave us 12. So 96 divided by 12 would give us... Um, uh, 8 or 96 divided by 8 is, is 12. Alright you guys, I hope that lesson makes sense and take care.